All right, welcome back to the ZK Login Tutorial Series by Swizzle. I am your host, Andy of Swizzle. If you'd like, you can follow along here at Swizzle underscore on Twitter. I might not be posting too much. I just kind of want to focus on getting this thing done. You can see me here saying I'm going to work myself this week. And this just this, I got my little motivating friends here with me, and we're just getting it done. Speaking of me, I, I guess I should do a quick introduction of why you should even listen to me about ZK Login. Well, first of all, if you're already an expert cryptographer or crypto app developer, then you may not need to listen to this tutorial series, but if you're getting into cryptography or blockchain technology and building apps with crypto then maybe I can be of help to you I taught cryptography in 2007 before Bitcoin even existed I was working at Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles for Johns Hopkins University and before you get too impressed with all these university names, I'll be honest, I was teaching for Johns Hopkins University's uh, Center for Talented Youth Program, or CTY. And I was working with middle schoolers, teaching them cryptography from Caesar, shift ciphers, all the way up to public key cryptography. We built an Enigma machine, a German Enigma machine, so we could put our feet in the shoes of the Allies in World War II who were cracking the Germans' codes to win the war and that kind of stuff. So I have taught public key cryptography before, and I feel like the fact that I was teaching talented youth should not necessarily be a deterrent because I still had to know what I was doing. You know, we, we actually did real public key cryptography with the RSA algorithm for real. So, you know, we've done real cryptography, at least taught it. Anyway, uh, let's get into it. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm just going to read the about ZK login section from the Sui docs and I'm just gonna get in just go up through this section the integration guide and you might think well what you're just gonna read to us well yeah you know reading the docs is one of the most important things for a developer to do it's super important to just read the docs and different people learn different ways so why not have an audio version like an audiobook version of the docs you know, at least this intro part. And then we're also going to look at this ZK login flow diagram as sort of a sort of a high level thing. There's also a section on how ZK login works. So uh, we could we could take a, a gander through that as well. All right. So let's let me zoom in here. All right. About ZK login. ZK Login is a SWE primitive that lets wallets and apps link to SWE objects with an OAuth credential, enabling users to perform transactions using both the credential and attached objects. ZK Login eliminates the need for users to handle private keys or recall mnemonics or passwords in their wallets. By guiding users through the OAuth flow, a ZK login address is generated, enabling any associated objects to execute transactions on chain. ZK login is designed with the following principles in mind. Number one, simple onboarding. With the familiar OAuth login flow, ZK login enables users to easily create a SWE wallet and engage with SWE, eliminating the need for cryptographic key management. Woohoo! Number two, fully self custodial. A ZK login transaction requires user approval within the OAuth login process, preventing unilateral fund movement from a ZK login wallet. 
even by the OAuth provider. Mm. Number three, privacy focused. Zero knowledge proofs prevent third parties from linking SWE addresses and OAuth identifiers. Number four, natively supported. ZK Login is a protocol level signature scheme benefiting from crypto agility. Unlike smart contract based alternatives, it will smoothly integrate with sponsored transactions and multi-sig. Hmm. Foundation for the identity layer. In the future, ZK Login can serve as an opt-in identity layer for users on chain. Whoa. Are you a builder who wants to integrate with ZK Login into your wallet or application? Dive into our integration guide. So that's what we'll do in the next video. We'll start with that. If you want to understand how ZK Login works, including the zero, including how this zero knowledge proof is generated and how SWE verifies a ZK Login transaction, see this section. I wonder why they keep saying an ZK Login transactions. Shouldn't it be a ZK Login? I don't know. If you are curious about uh, maybe I'll submit a change to that. I think it's supposed to be A. If you're curious about the security model and the privacy considerations of ZK Login, visit this page. So, got it all. All right, more questions? You can even ask more questions. All right, here's a list of open ID providers that ZK Login supports right now. Um, some more are currently being reviewed to determine whether they can support it. So right now we have Facebook, Google, Twitch, Slack, and Apple login supported. Definitely excited about the Google one in particular. And then we're reviewing Red Bull, Microsoft, AWS, Amazon, WeChat, and Auth0, and Okta. I'm, I'm especially excited about Auth0 because if ZK Login can support Auth0, then that means ZK Login could support whatever logins that work with Auth0. So that could open up a real Pandora's box in a good way for unbounded possibilities, if I'm understanding it correctly. So the high-level flow for our integration guide, all right? Here's the high-level flow the wallet or front-end application must implement to support ZK Login enabled transactions. Number one, the wallet creates an ephemeral key pair. So like a temporary sort of key pair that's just going to disappear. We just use it temporarily and throw it away. Number two, the wallet prompts the user to complete an OAuth login flow with the nonce, which is the nonce is a unique value that they generate just to create randomness. So you complete the auth, OAuth, maybe I'll stop interrupting and defining things, I'll just read it. Complete an OAuth login flow with the nonce corresponding to the ephemeral public key. Three, after receiving the JWT token, the wallet obtains a zero knowledge proof. After receiving the JavaScript web token, I'm pretty sure that's what it stands for. I guess I said I would stop interrupting it, but you know what? Oh, JSON, my bad. JSON web to JavaScript web token. Well, you know, JSON stands for JavaScript object notation. So it is JavaScript based. So after receiving the JWT token, the wallet obtains a zero knowledge proof. Number four. The wallet obtains a unique user salt based on a JWT token. The OAuth subject identifier and salt can be used to compute the ZK login address. And this salt is just another value to create more randomness and to, to make it sort of unique, make the make a new value that's unique for the user. Number five. The wallet signs transactions with the ephemeral private key. Number six, the wallet submits the transaction with the ephemeral signature and the zero knowledge proof. Okay, I guess you still use the ephemeral private key, 
but then they're going to submit the transactions with the ephemeral signature as well as a, a zero knowledge proof. So from what I understand, that means the app itself or third parties cannot see the SWE address and the OAuth identifiers. So you wouldn't be able to get my SWE address from my Google email address. However, I think as an app provider, I would still be able to get your, your Google information that you're willing to share with me. So as we explore, we'll get clearer about all this. You know, I'm just like trying to be one step ahead of you, you know, and that, and, and that way you can and hold your hand and teach you how to do this stuff. So I don't have an example integration yet. That would be great if they can get that going. The way it works roughly in rough sketches, the ZK login protocol relies on the following. Number one, a JSON web token is assigned payload from OAuth providers, including a user defined field name and nonce. ZK login leverages the OpenID Connect OAuth flow by defining the nonce as a public key and an expiry epoch, which is uh, some length of time in SWE, and we'll I'll get into the detail of how long each epoch or epoch is epoch I think it's epoch um, uh, as we get into the actual implementation in the next videos. Number two, the wallet stores an ephemeral key pair where the ephemeral public key is defined in the nonce. The ephemeral private key signs transactions for a brief session, eliminating the need for user memorization. Hmm. The Groth 16 zero knowledge proof is generated based on the JWT token concealing privacy sensitive fields. That's number one, a transaction submitted on chain with the ephemeral signature and the ZK proof. SWE authorities, so I think that might mean the validators, the blockchain validator set. SWE authorities execute the transaction after verifying the ephemeral signature and the proof. Number two, instead of deriving the SWE address based on a public key, the ZK login address is derived from sub that uniquely identifies the user per provider. I wonder why they call it sub. Uh, ISS identifies the provider, that's the OAuth provider, and then AUD identifies the application. I wonder what that stands for, like the audience, maybe? The audience? Uh, and user salt, a value that unlinks the OAuth identifier with the on-chain address. Here's the complete flow, this diagram, which I have pulled up over here. All right, uh, here's the, the whole flow. I'm gonna zoom in the different parts and kind of just um, move around. All right. So first, we have a user generated, a user generates the ephemeral key pair, which it's ephemeral in that it's only going to be exposed to the application very briefly at each time. But if I'm understanding it correctly, the wallet's actually going to store the key pair. All right, so we have an ephemeral secret key, SK, and an ephemeral private key. And then we'll choose a max epoch for the transaction. And that's going to determine how long our ephemeral key pair lasts. Next, we'll go through the provider's login flow with a crafted nonce, which is like a hashed, I believe H stands for hashed, some sort of hashing of the public key for the user, concatenated, this double uh, bars stand for concatenation, concatenated with the max epoch, concatenated with the JSON web token randomness, which is some, some kind of randomness. I think it's, they, they throw on a bunch of random, random numbers just to add more randomness, to add more entropy. I, I believe that's to generate entropy is another way to say that. So that all gets sent to the OAuth provider 
and the OAuth provider sends back a JSON web token to the application front end. So you don't need a server. You, you, this could be serverless. This is all on the front end here so far. Next, the application sends your JSON web token to a salt backup service. You could also do the salt in various ways. The user salt is used when computing the ZK login SWE address and there's several options to maintain a user salt. You could do it client side. So you could request the user input a salt and then the user has to remember it. You could use a browser to ensure proper workflows to prevent users from losing wallet access during device or browser changes. One approach is to email the salt during new wallet setup. That's interesting. Another one is to expose an endpoint that returns a unique salt for each user consistently. So you could store a mapping from user identifier like the sub to the user salt in a conventional database like the user or password table something you could do and the salt is unique per user you could also implement a service that keeps a master seed value and derive a user salt with key derivation by validating and parsing the JWT token for example HKDF IKM equals seed salt ISS concatenated with AUD info equals sub something like that it says that's defined here what is here fast crypto is the crypto that SWE is based on and you can see an example here of it being based on it this is a rust file this is rust code dot rs and they are making this this function here to do h mac based extract and expand key derivation so there you go if you really want to get in the weeds you can check out that kind of stuff you can click on these links and understand that in even more detail note that this option does not allow any rotation on master seed or change in client id otherwise a different user address will be derived and will result in loss of funds someone could hack you and change your client ID I could see that being a problem however you generated the salt you return it for the user identified by the JWT token and then you send the JWT token and the salt to a ZK proving service this will return a Groth 16 proof an address seed and claims for the provider and the app as well as a header okay so Groth 16 is we should maybe look that up what is Groth 16 definition let's see what it is it's a ZK um, well let's see it's a a pairing based ZK snark dating to 2016 it's a proving system to uh, it's a standard for doing a ZK proof. So we could say, like, what is a ZK proof? What is a ZK Stark proof? Just so we're on the same page with that. Type of zero knowledge proof. Our zero knowledge proof allows you to prove the truth of a statement without sharing the statement's contents or revealing how you discovered the truth. So the app is going to send this JWT token as well as a user salt and the ZK proving service is going to prove that that is legit without looking up a, a bunch of private information somehow. Number eight, after we get our Groth 16 proof, our address seed, our claims, our header, the application front end, we have a user generated address. What does tilde equal mean? that stands for not equal to oh okay so not equal to the hash of the address seed concatenated with the issuer identification number and the app identification number okay number nine the user creates a transaction and signs with the ephemeral 
secret key resulting in an ephemeral signature. I think maybe that's what that colon means. I'll have to look into that. All right. So number 10, the user submits transaction, TX bytes, just the raw bytes of the transaction, along with the ephemeral signature, ephemeral public key, the proof, the address seed, the claims, and the header. Wow, that's a lot. Then the user submits the transaction to the blockchain, and then the authenticator checks. They verify the sender of transaction is derived from the address seed with revealed claims the ISS and AUD, verify the signature of the user against the public key of the user. They verify the ZK proof using a fixed ZKVK. You know it. Number four, the authenticator retrieves the public key and checks if it is the same used in the ZK proof. And then they retrieve the provider public key. The authority state stores issuer one and then what is this kid one maybe that's for the zkvk maybe that's the k's is those those kids uh kid one like thing one and thing two uh so that's a j that results in a jwk one and the issue one and kid two results in jwk two each authority calls a jwk endpoint and then they agree on the view of the latest JSON web key. So a JWK is a JSON object that represents a cryptographic key. The members of the object represent properties of the key, including its value. It's a JSON structure representing a set of public keys as a JSON object using the elliptic curve or RSA algorithms. Public key representations can help verify signature with the corresponding private key. They store these states so they can verify signatures. So as you can see, this is gonna get pretty complicated. But if we work together, you know, we'll figure this thing out. Th this stuff is this stuff is just OAuth. So, you know, even if you're not familiar with OAuth, we're gonna go into great detail about that so that we are exceedingly clear and we understand it very fully we're going to get into the installation next so next what we'll do is we'll install the zk login typescript sdk thanks for being here i'm andy of swizzle wishing you great joy in your journey and our journey together creating a zk login powered app by the way, this is uniquely cutting edge, groundbreaking cryptography. So don't feel bad at all if you're absolutely over your head confused right now. As you could tell, when I went through the diagram, I was pretty confused about some of this more advanced stuff. And I have taught cryptography before Bitcoin even existed. So don't worry about it and don't feel bad. Just feel good that we are getting into some amazing next level stuff and we have the potential to understand and have knowledge of things that practically no one else on earth knows how to do so we're becoming like superhumans in a way by studying this so let's humble ourselves let's take a humble learning attitude and let's get it all right i'll see you in the next one